welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Crystal, the owner and maker of Crafty Mile 2. Today's tutorial is on how I create my geode tumblers. I really love making these. They come out different each and every time. There's so many different color combos that you can do to make a very beautiful geode tumbler. Um, this is probably one of my top sellers. People just love these. You'll also find everything that I used in the description box below in the videos. So be sure that you subscribe to my channel and you can also find me on social media, on Instagram and Facebook and also Etsy. Let's get started. All right guys, so first you're gonna start off with a clean prep tumbler. I always spray paint mine white with a satin Rust-Oleum. You're also going to want to have Mod Podge and um, a few different size brushes if you can. I would, if you only have one, I would maybe just use a smaller tipped brush. Your, uh, the glitter that we're going to use today are Blue Diamond from Pink and Purple Monkey, 10, 12, 13, Prickly Pear Cleopatra, all from Peachy Olive Glitters, and Cabo from Pink and Purple Monkey. Um, I will, like I said before, I will list everything down in the description of where you can get each of the colors and all the items that I use. Next, you're going to want to get a pencil. I could only find this one from our workshop, but you, I recommend maybe getting one that has an eraser. That way you can erase some of the lines. There's a few different ways that you can do, um, a geo tumbler. This is how I first started. It kind of gave me a template of how big my geode I wanted it to be um, so I could just see it visually before I started putting glitter on. Um, so I always start with doing the center first of my geode and then I'll start drawing the outer lines as well so that way I can see how big it's going to be at the very end. Um, and I'll probably speed up this video just throughout, um, just so you're not watching me do some process, long processes. Okay, so now that I've drawn my design, I'm going to start off with the blue diamond and I'm going to move everything out of the way, grab my Mod Podge and you're just going to put a small amount in the center and then use your brush and kind of fill in that inner circle. When you do your Mod Podge, you just want to make sure that you don't have any big chunks of Mod Podge because it's going to take longer for it to dry. but with this one, I'm using the first uh, chunky glitter, so I'm going to make it a little bit thicker than normal, um, but still not a big glob. And then I'm just going to take a dry brush and brush off all the excess glitter that there is. Another thing to keep in mind is whenever you're uh, pouring glitter, you want to make sure you pour it either on over parchment paper or on just regular paper. That way when you're done with each pour, you can um, save your glitter and pour it back into the container. Between each step, I also put my brush in water um, and you'll see me do that off and on. And it's just so that the Mod Podge does not dry um, on your brush. And then I'll, when I pull it out, I'll just um, wipe it off on a dry disposable towel that I have. So now I'm going through and I'm doing my next line. And this one's just going to be a little bit, of course, smaller than my first. And I'm just going to go around and same thing, do a nice thin layer and then dump my glitter 
um, and I'm going to carefully dump it along the edge. I'm not going to dump it over the middle of the glitter that I have already poured, just so to limit the um, the possibility of having it get mixed in to the center. So you have some kind of nice lines. And then again, go around and dry brush off any dry um, glitter that or loose glitter. And then I'll also sometimes tap it with a PVC pipe that I have or a brush. Just depends on kind of what I have around to knock off that excess glitter. And then I'll repeat the process and it's just kind of like a, a pattern. You dump your glitter, pour it back into the glitter <laughs> container and um, repeat with the Mod Podge and glitter repeat. So as I go through this process, I'll go ahead and speed up the video, um, but I'm pretty sure you guys get the idea. Also, I wanted to mention as I pour my glitter around, if once I wipe off all the excess glitter, loose glitter, if I see a spot just like here that is um, needs a little more coverage, I may put a little dot on my finger and just pat it, gently pat it down with the Mod Podge and then add more glitter. Um, but if you have a, a large amount of glitter that needs more coverage, I would wait until your Mod Podge is dry before you add that second layer because you're going to need to use your brush. So it's usually about dries in about five minutes or so, um, depending on how thick of a layer you put on. So just something to keep in mind when you're applying your glitter and Mod Podge. So on this next step, now I'm doing the opposite side of the tumbler. And on this side, I did not do the pencil. Um, this is how I normally do my tumblers now. Um, now that I've been doing these for a while. So I'll just freehand with my glue, a shape that I like with the Mod Podge um, and just kind of freehand how big I want it and then just go from there. So I'll just use each color, make, making sure again that I don't have big a big spot of um, Mod Podge anywhere and it's nice and smoothed out. Also with Mod Podge, you wanna make sure that you kind of move a little quickly depending on um, the temperature that you're at it's here in Arizona during the summer. And when I do this in the garage, I have to work pretty quickly. Uh, right now it's um, our winter, so it's not too bad. And I'll just keep doing the same process over, apply my Mod Podge, my glitter, and um, use the brush to dry, off, dry brush any loose glitter off.
All right, so now that all of my layers of um, geode colors have been laid, I'll, I didn't record this part, but I actually go and take it outside and I just spray it with a clear um, spray paint uh, satin and um, just to hold all those colors in place. Um, you can also go through if you wanted, if you didn't want to do spray paint, you could go through and um, do Mod Podge over each layer. Um, it's really up to you. It's preference. Um, I find doing the spray paint, I'm less likely to drag any other colors into the other sections. That's why I like to do the spray paint. So now I'll go through and I will um, just gently go around with a makeup brush, which you can get from Dollar Tree for a dollar. Um, they go, they're really nice um, for bigger areas on tumblers. And I'll gently go around and just outline the outside of my geode completely, uh, making sure to get a nice coverage on the handle as well. And then I do my white glitter. Um, and I just pour that on there and then until it dries. I usually wait about 30 to 40 minutes for my Mod Podge to dry. And then again, I will do the same thing. Take it outside and spray paint it with a clear spray paint. Um, just so that none of my glitter moves. Once it's all dry, I will go ahead and put it on my turner and uh, mix epoxy and apply epoxy over my tumbler. Okay, so once I'm ready for epoxy, I put my tumbler on um, after I spray painted it and let it dry. And now I'm going to, my First thing that I'll do is I'll actually go around and do my white first um, just in case even though I spray painted it just in case um, I don't want to drag any of the um, darker colors into my white so I'll mix my epoxy and then I'll gently go around and just go through and do my white first um, when you're doing your handle a good tip is to just do a very small amount on your handle because you're going to have to do a, probably two more layers with these geo tumblers um, and you can just do small layers on your handle and that'll keep your handle nice and um, smooth and you won't get like a big big lumps of epoxy on your handle at the base. Um, so that's just a little trick is just do a very small amount onto your handle. So I'll go around and do my white and make sure you do your bottom too. And then I'll start doing it, trying to go into my lighter colors of glitter first and then work my way out to the darker. Okay, so next, um, once my epoxy is all applied all over my tumbler, I'm going to go through with a plain colored toothpick and pick out any of the dark spots that I see of glitter um, and just go around and try to get remove any of those. Um, I, after that, I will go through with my heat gun and go quickly over, back and forth over my tumbler um, to pop any of the bubbles that I may have. And then I will let the tumbler dry or turn overnight until the next morning. And then I can do step the next step. Okay, so on this next step, I use a Dremel. Um, it's very important to wear some PPE. So safety glasses and a respirator or a mask because when you're sanding or Drumming the rim of your tumbler, you're going to get a lot of dust or particles that will fly up. Um, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually get the tip, the top of my tumbler wet and then go around. I usually go on the setting about five and I go around gently around my rim of my tumbler, removing just a very small layer of epoxy and glitter so that you can see uh, stainless steel. Um, I go around and do this uh, because 
when you add those last few layers of epoxy, this is going to give you a really good seal because it's going to attach to the stainless steel. So it's not just going to be glitter all the way up to the top and um, that's it. I really feel like your tumblers will last a lot longer if you do it this way. And you can kind of see how you can see just a very small amount. I know it's a little bit hard on this, but you'll be able to see just a very small amount of the stainless steel tumbler. So I'll just go around with my Dremel, like I said, and gently do the edge of my tumbler until I get that nice line. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I will actually go through with an X-Acto knife and clean the rim of my tumbler as well, removing any epoxy that may have gotten over the side whenever I was doing the layer of epoxy. Like I said, I'll go around with my X-Acto knife and I'll just clean off any epoxy that's dried on there, any chunks of um, paint, things like that, you know, stuff that's kind of just really easy to remove. I'm going to make sure my rim is nice and smooth, um, but this just really helps is always do this on the final stages of my tumblers. So I'll just go around and get it nice and smooth and then after that I will move to sanding my tumbler all right so next I will use a 220 grit sandpaper I like to do a wet sand Again, um, just to keep those dust particles down, um, I really find that that really helps. Um, so you're just going to go through and you're going to sand gently sand your tumbler. You don't want to do a real heavy sand, but you want to try to get as many bumps um, that you may have um, taken off. You really want to make sure that you pay attention to the handle and try to get it as smooth as possible. Um, because the next step after this is we're actually going to draw our lines. And when you draw those lines, if your tumbler is not smooth, you will, um, you will definitely see any little bumps. So again, just go around and kind of feel for any, um, bumps or rough edges and go through and sand. Then once I do this, I will wash my tumbler and I will move and do um, some essential oil with the dry eraser to remove any paint. All right, so after my tumbler is dry and sanded, I will use a dry eraser and essential oil lemon, and I will go around my tumbler and remove any um, spray paint that has gotten on my cup when I was prepping it and getting it ready and I will clean the inside and the rim. I find that the essential oil and the dry mister eraser really help remove that without a whole lot of um, elbow grease um, and plus you're not using anything that's toxic like when using um, a lot of people some people use acetone. All right, so this next step is honestly personal preference. I really like to line my geodes with um, these oil-based 
uh, markers. You can choose, they come in a variety of colors. Some little uh, this one dips. is actually going to be uh, a as copper. You're outlining um, your to, glitter I figured it would to make really it look well more the jagged or like a geo tumbler. They if also, you do end up making um, having silver, an accident or a spot um, like that you don't like, different you can colors always go back and get all and Marcy's in the description, rubbing so alcohol you can to remove any that sections like. that you may not like. Um, I just usually let mine dry for about an hour, and then I'll move to the next step, which is doing hopefully my final layer of epoxy. All right, guys, so this is the last stage of epoxy, you just in, which is really nice because you don't have to worry about any glitter spreading or anything like that. So you're just going to want to put a nice uh, smooth layer on, pretty not real heavy. Uh, you're just going to go around and apply it everywhere. Make sure, you again, that you um, pay attention to that handle and get a nice small layer, thin layer, on that handle make sure that there's not too much epoxy built up around um, on your tumbler because it will set and you'll end up with a heavy blob at the end of your handle All right, guys, here is the final result of that tumbler. They always come out so unique and so beautiful. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe. I'll be posting videos each and every Saturday. Today's tutorial is on how to glitter. Uh, everything I used in the description box below. Blue. You'll also find everything. I really love making these tumblers. Everything that I used in today's tutorial in the description. Today's tutorial is on how I 